Good evening everyone in YouTube land. From time to time I'm asked if I've ever done any video production that is sort of cinematic or that's made to look sort of like film. And the answer is yes. Uh, I've done a few projects where you know my former employers wanted a television commercial to look like film. And also I've done then some um, footage, some live concert stuff for the band Zoso, which is a Led Zeppelin cover band. If you ever want to go see some of my other video on my other channel, it's Tony's Blue Ridge. Is that one T O N Y S Blue Ridge all together? And you'll see a lot of video from Zoso where I tried to make it look sort of like old '70s sort of stuff. The the interesting thing is I've never used 2.4 to one uh, aspect. I've never had any reason to. No one's ever asked for that and. I think a lot of times when people are talking about cinematic look, they're talking more about the letterbox thing. Uh, sometimes than even our frame rate or saturation or desaturation or whatever. So just for fun, I did do uh, something that I would probably do if I were going to try to do film. This might be my film look. I like color. I like it to be saturated. I like lots of contrast. So watch this little bit here. This is some uh, fake credits for a movie I just uh, shot some some video out in my yard during a little bit of a rainstorm I actually shot it from my back porch so here's kind of how i might do the credits at the beginning of a movie or something and then i'll explain to you how i did this in adobe premiere pro cc 2015. <laughs> So folks, how did I make my little um, cinematic type of intro there, which was kind of some silliness? Well, I'll just give you a quick look here. You see I have a uh, letterbox template over the top. It's first time I turn some of these things off, turn the titles and stuff off, so you can see what I actually have here in Premiere. So I actually just have 16.9 video that I've brought in. This is uh, some 4K stuff I shot. This is just lilies and things, or what do you call these? I can't remember. Day lilies, I think. And so uh, you see, I just went and shot all these things. So they're they're much larger than what you're actually seeing pine cones in the trees. And I shot some peaches and roses and stuff. And uh, so anyway, uh, what I did, I, I did apply a, a lumetry look to most of these. And then I actually did some changes myself to some of them. Some of them I vignetted a little bit because I, I liked the vignette. Uh, and you don't see it very much when I turn the letterbox on because uh, you cut a lot of that out. But still, there's just, just bits of it that I thought looked really kind of nice, vignetted somewhat. So how did I make my little letterbox? There may be a template in Premiere. Honestly, I looked around a little bit, poked around, trying to see if I could find a 2-4 letterbox. This is all 16-9 we're seeing here. And, and I didn't find one. Uh, and it's probably in there somewhere. It's hard to believe it doesn't have one. So what I did, I went to Photoshop. And I just put a box, like it's a white box here. And it doesn't really matter what size it is. I did go ahead and make it, uh, what, 1080 times 2 is 2160. I made 2160 just, just out of silliness. It could have been 1,000 pixels, whatever else. And then I sized it to be 2.4 to 1. Well, how to do that? Well, I just went in and I said image size, right? 
and uh, I turned the little uh, thing that locks the image size together so that they do it so it constrains it. I turned that off by clicking that button there. And so I wanted the width to be 240%, 240. So you have to make sure you got percent chosen here instead of pixels. And I said, okay. And so boom, it made me a 24 to 1, to a 240 to 100, uh, or 24 to 1 aspect box. And I did a save. I saved that as a JPEG. I'm just going to close that and say no for right now. We don't need Photoshop anymore. And so then you can see I brought in somewhere here. So then what I did was I actually imported that uh, white box there, right? And I pulled it into, I pulled it like over here, just off to the side a little bit. And I went and I did that so I could see kind of what I had to work with here. Ah, I got that turned off. Here we go. And, uh, I, you know, I, since I made it too big, I had to size it down. So I'll go ahead and show you what I did. This is kind of, I, I think I found out that 65% is what worked. I mean, you know, you see, if I see the edges, I think 65 actually was perfect. And so there I could see uh, what I needed in a 16.9 piece of video to mask out. So I went and I did a file new title. And I'll call this uh, 2, 4, uh, to 1. Actually, it could be 2.4 to 1, shouldn't it? Or 240 to 100. And so then what I did was I went over here and I got me a box. And I made sure that the box was going to be black. And I got my fill color is... I don't remember my fill color. I think he is black right now. And I just... No, it's white. Look at that. And I pulled down until I got just the right amount there. Now I'll do my fill color here is black. We see the zero 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 zero, which is black, and then I just uh, did a Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and then I pulled that same black box down to here and nudged it up until I knew that it was just right. Okay, so there's my two four O box. I'm gonna say save, Control S to save on that. I'm gonna close this title. And now I actually do have a letterbox. And of course, I've already made the letterbox too. Here's Socks the Cat. If I turn this uh, thing off here, we see that I do have the letterbox. That's the 2.4 aspect. I'll go ahead and delete that. So how did I get what I would call my look? Uh, the, the look that I wanted? Well, I'll go ahead and click on one of the pieces of video. And what I did do, I went over here into Effects. Let me get my cross out of the way here. I went to Lumetri Presets. Lumetri presets. I did cinematic and just for fun. I went ahead and did cinema space 50 uh, And I didn't particularly like it. I tried 100 tried 25 kind of liked 50 so I just pulled uh, 50 over onto to one of these actually this first one and Then I made a few little tweaks to it some things. I'll, I didn't like the fact that the the full cinema uh, cinema space 50 killed a lot of my shadows the stuff that was in my shadows so I went up here. Now, if you're wondering what, what, you know, maybe yours doesn't come up looking like this. I am in the editing CS 5.5 look. And a lot of us old timers who've been with Premiere for a long time, we like this layout here where we have all of our stuff over here and our, our effects over here and different little things we can control here. Uh, and, you know, then our, our presets and all. And you know, you'll see a lot of, like, I call it old timers because we've been around since version one or two of Premiere. And this is just a look that we're accustomed to. You don't have to stay with this necessary layout. But these things all, uh, you know, you, you, if you've got Premiere open at all, 2015, this stuff resides somewhere. You might have this up here. It is, all these things float. You can detach them and put them in different places. But I just use the editing 5.5 layout. But what I did do, I, get, I went over here and I went down to uh, shadows. And I'm pretty sure I changed, maybe not on that particular one I didn't, but some of these, you do a little look here, and you'll see a 15.3, I kind of liked that, I'll go over here to this one. I guess it depends on what the subject was I was doing. I actually went and I tweaked a little bit of almost all of these. Uh, I did do, in, in some of them I did some exposure changes and things. And uh, you can see some some of the thing, here's some feather, I didn't, I didn't feather that particular one. If we wanted to feather it though, that would certainly be something to be kind of cool like that. That would have, that would have benefited maybe a little bit from it, wouldn't it? It's kind of neat to have that little darkness around the edges there. Might go ahead and do a control save and save that. 
And then I went and I just found a cool font. I'll turn the uh, toggle this track on and you'll see I just had these little fonts and things. I found, I cannot remember the name of that font. I could guess I could, could click on it and find out what it was. Uh, I am fail. Never used this font before. I am fail DW Pica. Hmm. I just thought it looked kind of cool for a, uh, for a, uh, title. And so you see, I dragged those into what I thought were strategic places. And like here where I did a gentle rain. Now you'll see here, I stacked a couple of, uh, titles. It's actually the same title on top of each other. From time to time, I'll do that just to get a little harder, uh, drop shadow on something. I could probably have pulled that one over a little. It might, might have looked better. You know, I like that it, you know, very, very small amount of contrast there against the uh, green trees. So maybe I should have pulled that over here like that. Maybe even low. That could have been one of those low titles, and that would have been where the title would have been. I'll hit save. It might have been better than what I had done when I showed you the render there, but there you go. So this is it. This is how I pulled it off. And then, of course, key to me is finding a, a cool piece of music. And this is a royalty-free piece of uh, Digital Juice Stack Tracks uh, cinematic score uh, sound. And so I thought it did really well with that. So there you go. That's my little attempt at playing around and doing something that is slightly cinematic. And, uh, you know, I, I am not one that thinks that it has to look exactly like film. I do sort of like the digital look. I do like things to be a little richer than they come out of the camcorder. So, yeah, if I were going to do some uh, cinematic type things, I would definitely uh, bump up the saturation, change the contrast somewhat. In some ways, maybe soften the sharpness just a tad, perhaps, and uh, go for some just some, some little tonal adjustments there. I do like the vignetting. Uh, particularly on these little intro type things like this. So that's my little stab at showing you how I would do a cinematic look. Hope this has helped someone. If you have some of your own tips you would like to share, that would be fantastic, folks. Thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe if you like. Uh, screenplay by Big Rat Daddy T. That's one of my nicknames. Peace to all who watch. Have a good evening.